really showed us uh, strong points as well as weak points and things that we have to uh, bolster up to, to really make this machine go the distance. Yeah, but can MC and MIT Professor Woody Flowers go the distance? That's the question. We'll see. But first, while we have this break in the action, let's go to Ann Craig, who's with one of our teams in our next round. Dan, I'm out here with the Xerox X-Cats, and they're doing an incredible job today, and they also have quite the reputation to live up to. In the history of U.S. First, they've won the Chairman's Award two years since 1989. Now, what is the Chairman's Award exactly? The Chairman's Award is the award you receive for the best high school corporation partnership. And um, we continuously improve in our team as a whole, and so we're hoping to go for it one more year. Tell me about that partnership with Xerox. How much time have they committed to you all? Hours and hours and hours. We're there every day till 10 o'clock at night on school nights, on Sundays, on birthdays, on holidays. It doesn't matter. We're there all the time. That is amazing. So it is quite the time commitment, huh? Yeah. How is the teamwork? How do you like working in this type of atmosphere? Oh, it's excellent. Teamwork is the only way you could get this kind of thing built in six weeks and still have such a wonderful time doing it. It's great. That is great. Dan, we're going to keep our eyes on this team. All right, thanks, Ann. We'll do just that in the next round. Going for the Red Balls in this round is Mountain Home High School, partnered with Baxter Healthcare. They're from Arkansas, and I love that robot name, Two Minute Warning. Hunting for Blue Balls, another Baxter Healthcare team, Johnsburg High School. Their robot, Biohawk. Their attitude, to win. We want to win because this is our idea, and we want to see it succeed. We want to know that something we came up with, that we made, we built, together as a team can succeed. I mean, usually in school you get to put your ideas, you know, from like even if they say, you know, what would you think a robot to do? We can never actually put it together and find out exactly what it's gonna do. And this way we get to see our own ideas put together and be done. I think we just, it'd be overwhelming to win everything. I mean, we just wanted to go out there and try our hardest, but to win the whole thing would be outstanding. Well, this round's third contender for the entire thing is J.C. Wilson High, partnered up with the Xerox Corporation. The robot's name is Hexcat. Oh, Woody, would you do us the honors? Three, two, one, go! This round promises plenty of action. Two-minute warning, jumping into that action early, gobbling up those red three-pointers. Biohawk spins, looking to deliver its blue three-pointers as two-minute warning moves in for the drop followed immediately by Wilson's Highs. That's their hex cat, and there goes Biohawk's Blues. It looks like New York rush hour down there. Biohawk's driver is going for a large ball with its suction cup. Wilson's human player takes a shot at it, but the suction holds. Two minute warning tries running its way in. It doesn't work. But uh, shutting the goal makes Biohawk lose its grip, apparently. Biohawk scrambling to recover now. Hexcat wheels in a large ball and heads for the goal. It's up to the drivers now, trying to position Hexcat perfectly for the score. Nice job. And now two-minute warning. Tries another ram job. That's good enough, shoving the ball in. Biohawk is back wheeling for position, trying to find that right spot to make the drop, but that is no good. Here's Hexcat again, trying for another 10-pointer. Some last-minute maneuvering going on, and can they get it to go? Everybody's waiting. Nice job, guys. Biohawk's two big blues are still in play. The Johnsburg High Robot tries to beat the buzzer. Not in time, that's got to be tough. Stick around, scores, quarterfinals, and more robotic ruckus coming up from Epcot Center as Hexagon Havoc continues. And we're back, everybody, and by a single point, J.C. Wilson's Hex Cat held off Mountain Home High's two-minute warning. You couldn't have asked for a better match. The way the machine is running right now, I think they have a good shot to go at least to the semifinals and hopefully to the finals and win it. Each machine is built with teamwork and precision, but out here on the playing field, it's their human drivers that take the heat. Our cameras got up close and personal on the people behind the robots. Number one, that's what all the U.S. first teams are, for they are the spirit of this truly unique competition. 
as we get back to the action. Edison Technical High School Tiger Bolt has just claimed the last spot in the quarterfinals. They had a loss in an earlier round, but Tiger Bolt has clawed its way back to be one of the final eight. Here are the quarterfinal matchups then. Lakewood High partnered with E-Systems faces Manchester Central High and Osram Sylvania. The Walnut Hills High School Proctor and Gamble team goes up against Enrico Fermi High partnered with Hamilton Standard. Next, Quincy Public Schools and 9X battle J.C. Wilson High partnered with Xerox. And the last quarterfinal puts the Edison Technical Harris Corporation Rochester Institute of Technology team against West Ottawa High School and the Prince Corporation. And just a reminder, the quarterfinals are one-on-one, -on -one, best two out of three matchup confrontation. So stay tuned as the action, dare we say, takes off next. Go! And welcome back, everybody. I'm Dan Debenham here at the U.S. First National Championships. The action has been tremendous at Epcot Center in Walt Disney World. And from 74 teams, we're down to the final eight. Here's a wrap-up of the quarterfinals then. Lakewood High and East Systems battled Central High and Osram Sylvania in a high-scoring round. It saw Lakewood early on with a defensive sneak of Central's yellow 10-pointer. The second of the best of three rounds was a low-scoring affair with smart defensive play again from Lakewood, pinning Central to the ropes for the last 30 seconds of the round. Lakewood moves on. Central's quest for the title is over. Walnut Hills High and Procter and & Gamble take the first round from Enrico Fermi High and Hamilton Standard. Fermi's smiley face should have been frowning as its suction cup failed and Walnut Hills walloped them 53-36. The Fermi team took a five-minute timeout to work on their suction cup and came back to win the second round, 46 to 43. I guess it's true that suction power rules. In the decisive third round, both Enrico Fermi and Walnut Hills got a perfect score. We had a referee's decision in which Walnut Hills wins. Their red ball was highest in the goal, as you can see there. In our third quarterfinal, Quincy Public Schools and 9X face J.C. Wilson High and Xerox. Quincy scores quickly, then plays defense pinning Wilson at the edge of the field till the final buzzer. In their second match, Quincy again scores early. With only five seconds left, Wilson actually popped a large ball. The referee stopped the match to replace it, but it was too late for Wilson as Quincy goes to the semis. Now there's one spot left, and the question is who will get it? Edison Technical and Harris RIT or West Ottawa and Prince. West Ottawa has a neat defensive play going here, putting a triangular goal blocker into the goal, but it slips sideways as Edison Tech 2 plays defense and sneaks one of West Ottawa's balls to its human player. In the last seconds, West Ottawa tries to dislodge an Edison Tech 10-pointer, but time runs out and Edison wins with a perfect 56 points. West Ottawa's goal blocker is successful in the next round, and they score the first 10-pointer, but it is not enough to keep Edison Tech's Tiger Bolt at bay, as again, they score all their balls, then pin West Ottawa to the ropes. Tiger Bolt is on a tear and into the semifinals with two perfect scores in a row. Here are the semifinal matchups then. Lakewood High's Too Easy 2 versus Quincy Public Schools Spectrum and Walnut Hills Operation Orange up against Edison Technical's Tiger Bolt. And when we come back, we'll see who is going to the U.S. First Finals. In the meantime, I don't think there's a robot here that can outdance this guy. We'll be back. And me, I want to be a mechanical engineer. I think it's a very interesting type of engineering to do. It's, it's really exciting, and when we get up there, it's such an adrenaline rush, and you have your entire team back there screaming for you. Strategy and teamwork. We did get last place. Three points, I guess. Two minutes is very, very short. And welcome back to the action here at the U.S. First Hexagon Havoc Championships. We're into semifinal action now with the Quincy Public Schools 9X partnership going up against Lakewood High and E-Systems. Quincy actually lost their first round by a single point, but since then they have been on a tear, winning five straight rounds to earn this semifinal spot. What kind of strategy will they be using to keep the winning streak alive? Well, let's join Ann Craig talking with Quincy coach Alex DeFrondeville. Against one. All right, in the earlier matches, there's three machines out there. You can't afford to play defense because while you're playing defense on one machine, the other machine is scoring their points. But now, if you get your balls and you score quick, faster than the other machine, now you can go stop them.